I use vine charcoal to sketch in the basic details. If I make a mistake, it's easy to erase the charcoal and redraw. When the sketch is correct, I dust off the excess charcoal, leaving only a hint of my composition. Next, I redraw the scene using a small brush and yellow ochre. I do this because drawing with a brush as opposed to a rigid stick of charcoal yields a looser, more impressionistic guide. You might say it sets the tempo for the painting. Switching to a larger brush, I start massing in the larger shapes with random strokes. I start at no particular area of the canvas, simply an area of the composition that intrigues me the most. I lay in the darkest values first. Establishing correct value is critical to successful impressionistic painting. Working from darkest to lightest is the approach used by many successful artists and it works best for me. I mix very little paint at a time because I don't want to dominate the painting with any singular hue. If I need more of the same color, I simply mix more, but I don't worry that it might not match exactly. A variation of color tints makes a painting interesting gives it dimension and keeps it from looking so flat. Keep in mind, at this stage, the goal is not to paint to any degree of detail or precision, or even to stay within the confines of my sketch. In fact, I purposely try to color outside the lines, so to speak. The objective is to lay out the overall basic concept of the scene using random strokes to create loose shapes. When the canvas is completely masked in, it's time to evaluate. Are the values correct? Are the colors pleasing? Is the composition interesting? If any of these are not to my liking, then it's not too late to make changes. Satisfied that my overall concept works, I switch back to a small brush, mix a little burnt sienna, and redraw. My objective is not to retrace my original drawing. In fact, a lot of my original painted sketch is now obscured, and that's fine. Actually, it's fantastic because now I can draw freely using my blocked in colors as a basic guide. But I don't conform to the shapes when I draw this time. Remember, I purposefully colored outside of the lines when blocking in colors. Now I make a whole new drawing and let portions of those basic shapes fall outside of my drawing as they may. Colors of one object or area overlapping onto the colors of another add interest and whimsy to a painting. When I am done drawing this time, the foundation of the drawing is complete. Now it's time to have some real fun and start painting in earnest. When I start adding more color and more detail, I do respect my newly drawn lines to a certain degree. That is, I want some of the drawing to show, but not all. I just try to paint freely, and if the drawing gets lost at times, so be it. As I continue to add color, I will eventually find myself painting wet paint into wet paint, and this can yield some fun and interesting effects. At some point, however, it's beneficial to take a break and let things dry for a while. This makes adding more detail and brighter colors much easier. As I paint now, I keep referring to my reference photo, making sure that aspects of the photo which caused me to select it as my subject in the first place are also reflected in my painting.
sometimes I find a little more drawing is needed to flesh out some minor details. And now I will execute one of the most difficult feats of painting, knowing when to stop. I hope you enjoyed and learned from this demonstration. Thanks for watching. Thank you.